сигнал вес минус 112, связь. Сигнал вес сигнал 112, связь. Сигнал. Лично видим, ви, лично видим визуально, возле второй больницы, напротив церкви, там, где стоят автобусы, танки зашли с надписью Z. Снимай, снимай, снимай. Сейчас видно. This is the first time I saw the, the Russian sign of war. The hospital is surrounded. Dozens of doctors, hundreds of patients, and us. Да, я с прессой. Да, я с прессой. I have no illusions about what will happen to us if we are caught. February 24th, 2022. The city looks normal. Someone once told me, wars don't start with explosions, they start with silence. When we realized that the invasion was imminent, our team decided to go to Mariupol. We were sure it would be one of the main targets, but we could never imagine the scale and that the whole country would be under attack. специальной военной операции. В наши планы не входит оккупация украинских территорий. Мы никому и ничего не собираемся навязывать силы. Наши действия – это самозащита от создаваемых нам угроз, от еще большей беды, чем та, что происходит сегодня. After we arrive, the first bombs hit in the outskirts of the city. A military base with anti-aircraft systems. Russians are clearing the path for warplanes. Huge port, industrial city, a bridge to Crimea. We were here eight years ago when Russia tried to take it. And without a doubt, they will try again. We drive to the left bank, the part of the city closest to Russia. This is the first person I speak to today. I don't know if I should keep filming or try to calm her down. Идите домой, идите дома, по граждански мне стреляют. Идите домой. Никуда не бегите, идите домой спокойно. Я сын, наш дом с работой. Идите домой, он придет с работы. 
Он придет. А вы думаете, в дом да. не попадут? Не попадут. В подвал спуститесь и сидите. Там что-то попало, что-то значило тлень, походу. Я ну поняла, поняла. А вот э, может такое случиться, что Мариуполь перейдет под контроль Российской Федерации? Это будет... Может, очень бы не Это хотелось. Будет... Очень бы не хотелось. Чего бы не хотелось? Я хочу жить в Украине спокойно и тихо. Я смотрел сегодня его выступление Путина, блядь, по интернету. Он там так красиво, так красиво рассказывает своим гражданам, что у нас тут, что у нас чуть ли необходимость, блядь, вот надо напасть на Украину, иначе Украина нападет на Россию. Маразмать. Ножка, блядь, Шановні громадяни України, у державі введено військовий стан. Це необхідний крок заради безпеки країни та нашої перемоги. Зберігайте спокій, чітко слідуйте інструкціям військових та місцевої влади у ваших містах. Не піддавайтесь ворожій дезінформації. There are no directives to evacuate the city, but some people are leaving anyway. Отчество, имя скажите хотя бы. Сейчас. Как вас? Пошел нахуй, проститутка. I understand their anger. Their country is being attacked. It's our country too. And we have to tell its story. There are almost no real bomb shelters in the city, so people hide in the basements of their apartment buildings. Suddenly the lights go out. Не переживай, пожалуйста, не переживай, Дрюлочка, не переживай. Все, 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 не Я проснулась от бабахой сегодня. Пошли сюда. Ну, We send videos and photos to our editors. The war has begun. Ukraine is now a nation at war. 190,000 Russian troops and their proxies coming from Ukraine's northern, eastern and southern borders. Russia is moving fast. After Putin stopped speaking on cue, the missiles and airstrikes began. Air raid sirens sounded on and off. 
Kharkiv in the east and Mariupol in the south both came under heavy fire. There's real anger in the air. The hatred for Vladimir Putin is, is palpable. February 26th. This is emergency broadcast system. Russians are starting to surround the city, taking towns and blocking the roads on the outskirts. A quarter of the residents have left, but most decided to stay. This is Terrasport Fitness Center. Now it's one of the biggest improvised shelters in the city. So fewer fragments are created when bombs fall. Лучше переживаешь не за себя, а за ребенка. То есть я, ну если бы ребенка не было, я была дома и все. А страшно за ребенка, который не познал ни жизни, ничего. И непонятно за что, за что все. Чем провинились люди, которые жили? Я, я не понимаю, что происходит. Это просто какой-то трэш. This woman, she is the one I told to stay home on the first day. Вы мне сказали, идите домой, по гражданским стрелять не будут. Я пришла домой и как лупанули. I apologize. I'm glad she's okay. As I look at all these children, I think about my daughters. They also have to leave their home because of this war. News comes from all over Ukraine, and I cannot get over the feeling that something terrible is going to happen to this city. Missiles fired at civilian locations, according to the Ukrainians. Even though the Russians say they are not targeting civilians. Their worst nightmare coming true. Thousands of citizens are trying to flee the country. And those who are left behind have filled bomb shelters amid fears of rocket attacks overnight. Ukrainian soldiers like these have put up a stout defense of Mariupol because as a large port it's economically vital and as a major city just 30 miles from Russia, it's strategic. For both sides in this war, it is quite a prize. February 27th. Soldiers are patrolling around emergency hospital number two, a couple kilometers from the front line on the edge of the city. So far, Russians have not been able to break through. <laughs> First time in Mariupol, I hear a sound of a fighter jet. Uh, 
уже не говорит в небе над ними ухнуло. Самолет. Ну. The soldiers are tense and don't want to be filmed. Просто, понимаете, но здесь историческая война, и Понятное не, дело, не документировать ее. Не документировать ее просто нельзя. We are interrupted by an ambulance siren. U.S. officials warn that Russian forces are turning to their old and brutal tactics of laying siege to cities while targeting civilians and infrastructure from afar. He's punishing artillery and airstrikes. Heavy losses as indiscriminate shelling rained down on apartment buildings, the university in flames. Show this to Putin. A doctor said to an AP reporter, the doctor wanted Vladimir Putin to see quote, the eyes of this child and crying doctors. Anyone wanting to leave Mariupol probably has to hit the road by tomorrow, after which the last route out is expected to close. March 2nd. Russian strikes are causing problems with internet and electricity. All the international journalists we met in Mariupol have left. But we decide to stick with the medics for a few days. We drive to the left bank, where the heaviest fighting is happening. Oh, this woman was standing on her balcony when the shell hit the house on the opposite side of the street.
but shells don't just hit the left bank. These days attacks happen all across the city. The boy was playing soccer with his friends when shelling started. His legs were completely blown off. city of Mariupol, local officials say hundreds of casualties are now feared. A father lost in grief over the body of his 16-year-old son, Ilya. The electricity is gone. The internet's gone. The Russians are coming. Mariupol awaits its fate. Third. The 
shelling has reached the neighborhood around the hospital. Patients are moved away from the windows and day after day the conditions in the hospital get worse. This is one of the boys who was hit while playing soccer. Doctors smile at him, but I hear a whisper that his leg may need to be amputated. There are almost no antibiotics left to stop the sepsis. The internet and phones have stopped working. And I'm sending short dispatches to our editors of the satellite phone. The morgue is full, so doctors store bodies in utility rooms. <laughs> we stay and sleep in the hospital. So far, it seems to be the safest place. <laughs> From our observation point on the seventh floor of the hospital, I see the battle on the front line continues. Russians are still trying to break into the city.
all night we sit on the seventh floor of the hospital, hoping to catch a connection, to find a way to get these images out. Nothing works. I think about all this country has been through over the past eight years. All that I filmed. Revolution of dignity. Crimea's annexation. Russia's invasion of Donbass. MH17. Donetsk airport siege. War that seems endless. Thousands have died. We keep filming. And things stay the same. Worse even. Propaganda turns everything upside down. I think about my daughters. They were born into a world at war. I wish I could see them now. satellite phone to make short calls to editors. We tell them Mariupol is under siege, Russians are killing civilians, we are holding up, tell our families we love them. of two besieged cities in Ukraine are being delayed amid reports that Russia is violating a temporary ceasefire. A city is surrounded by Russian troops and there is no way out even for any humanitarian help. The situation is really dire in Mariupol. A corridor was planned to evacuate people from there and we've heard that it has not happened, that Russian forces have continued to shell the city. That's what the mayor has said. Um, we have no real-time information of what's going on in the city. This is the only radio signal you can catch in Mariupol now. Over the next weeks, Russia will bomb buildings, cut electricity, water, supplies, and finally, crucially, the cell phone, radio, television towers. We have to get out of the hospital to try to find a connection, to see what's happening to the city. hospital was destroyed. Это что? Это... Техника. Это в смысле Парк Сити? Да. А да, люди? У меня там друзья были, туда побежали. Пришел там метров да. 50 у них взорвалось. Я не знаю, вышли они или нет. As we search for a connection, we go neighborhood to neighborhood. Houses we saw standing days ago are destroyed. Oh, 
Вы откуда, ребята? Стакан. Ну пусть кто-то ну, кто принимает меры, нас убивают. Ой. Как вас зовут? Людмила. Людмила, Людмила, а фамилия ваша как? Амелькина. Скажите, Людмила, это вот это ваш дом, да? Да. We follow the smoke. Houses hit by shells burn. A humanitarian corridor was opened on March 5th. Vehicles fled the city, only to be blocked by Russian forces. Then the road was closed. Corridor no. На сегодня коридора нет, не договорились. Значит, все международные организации, которые только могут, максимально давят на всех участников конфликта, для того, чтобы они коридор организовали. Очень много гуманитарной помощи, но а за нее нужно тоже договориться, чтобы коридор открыли. Коридор коридором, а по коридору куда выезжать? Мы... Пока неизвестно. Вот мы либо информацию, у нас нет такой информации, мы отрезаны полностью от, от Украины, от всей. Я вас буду говорить. Послушайте меня, послушайте меня. Извините меня, может, мама где-то на связи нет. Расскажи, расскажите, как ситуация сейчас. Нет у нас ни воды, ни света, ни газа. Кушать готовим вот на улице. Вот дети боятся, стреляют. Red Cross, police. Ukrainian soldiers try to help and calm people down. Наблюдаем спокойно. Если будет эвакуация, мы будем ездить, оповещать, громко говорить. А вот Дома. Внимание, кто Человек убит или Ребят, вы хоть поднимайте, чтобы... На бульваре не было этот хаос. Все снимаем. Это тут разбит. that they are trapped, the more desperate they grow. Пидорасы! Гандоны, блядь, ебучие! Люди, просто сплотитесь! Не надо делать панику! 
Не надо грабить никого. Вы все равно будете тут же жить. Это ваш дом. Зачем вы бьете свои окна, свои, блядь, магазины? The city changed so much, so quickly. When we were in the hospital, one of the doctors told me, war is like an X-ray. All human insights become visible. Good people become better, bad people worse. Вася тоже выжить хочет. Вася тоже жить хочет. Где ты его взял? Не брось домашний. Не бросим. А вот, стой. But I thought it's not only the bombs, lack of food, water. It's isolation, the inability to contact relatives, to find out what's happening in other cities. People charge cell phones from a generator just to use them as flashlights. Cut off. We feel the same. We still cannot send our images. Есть ли какое-то для вас значение уже, кому будет принадлежать город или теперь осталось? Значение? Я не хочу, чтобы он России принадлежал. Я не хочу жить в России, я хочу жить в Украине. Не хочу никакой тут России, не хочу. Абсолютно не хочу, ни капли. That night, as we watch artillery shooting, our phones suddenly pick up connection. I split the footage into 10 second clips set three phones on the windowsill and sent. Bombs continued to rain down on the southern Ukrainian city of Mariupol, which was fully surrounded by Russian troops. The Russians say they aren't targeting civilians. This is 18-month-old Krill. Medics try to save the boy. They cannot. March 9th. Like a disease, war is taking over the city. We are back at the emergency hospital number two. The few city workers that are still on duty collect bodies to be buried. I recognize this sheet. It's Ilya, the boy who was killed playing soccer.
трудно. Ну да, трудно. Somewhere among these black bags lie the other children we filmed. Скажи, просто о том, что ты чувствуешь. Что я чувствую? Я не знаю, что чувствую. Ну, что сейчас будет в таких ситуациях? Единственное, чтобы она закончилась, это все. Я не знаю, кто виноват, кто прав, кто это все развязал. Будь они все проклят эти все люди, которые это затеяли. Another truck arrives. Bodies from the streets. desperately want to forget all this, but the camera will not let it happen. The shock wave. Ears and skin feel the change of pressure. We hide in the entryway of a building and wait for another strike, praying it will not hit us. We go to the top of the building and see the smoke just a few blocks away. It's a hospital.
try to find out how many dead and wounded there are. But in this chaos, nobody can answer. The name of the police officer speaking to us is Vladimir. He wants to make a statement. Так, пошли. Сьогодні російські загарбники скоїли тяжкий злочин. Вони нанесли бомбовий удар по центру міста Маріуполя. Вони зруйнували бомбами. And then he asks once more. Russian troops commit war crimes. Our family, our women, our children need help. Our people need help from international society. Please help Mariupol. Vladimir showed us the only place in the city where we could catch a signal and send the images. Outside a looted grocery store on Budivernikiv Avenue. from the maternity hospital will change the course of the war. But we have seen so many dead people, dead children. How could more death change anything? Airstrikes on the southern city of Mariupol destroyed a children's and maternity hospital. For once the aftermath of a bombing here at the city's maternity hospital was filmed for the world to see. Horror and devastation. This is clearly the, the worst and most egregious attack we have seen in this war so far. Mundial por el bombardeo ruso a un hospital pediátrico en Mariupol. The Associated Press also reports that city workers have had to create a mass grave to bury the dead. Now, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky calling this attack a war crime. Усе, що окупанти роблять з Маріуполем, це вже за межою звірства. Марч 10th. The city is still being bombed. Also here heavy machine guns. That means Russians have entered the city. Oh. 
Vladimir, uh -huh. the officer we met yesterday, is with us. <laughs> The last functioning fire department in the city, destroyed by another airstrike. I don't know if he survived. We try not to stay long in one place. The biggest university in the city was destroyed too. We drive back to catch a signal at the spot on Budivalnikiv Avenue. It's still the only place where you can get internet. It's past curfew, so Vladimir accompanies us. We check the news and speak to editors. Sorry, what? Hold on, hold on. This is coming back. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This motherfucker is flying around. Hold on, I can hear him. I, I, I don't think there has been a moment today when there was not, not an airplane in the air. And um, the prognosis is very pessimistic. I think they take the left bank already. I give them the latest, but there are disturbing updates for us. Okay. These women's stories have epitomized the tragedy unfolding in Ukraine. And yet even their suffering has been questioned, with Russian officials claiming on Twitter and in news programs that they must be actors. 
Это так называемые фейковые новости и постановочные фото- и видеосъемки. Последняя такая подделка из Мариуполя. Якобы имевшая место авиаудар полностью режиссированная провокация. Больницу превратили в съемочную площадку, пригласили статистов и актеров. Первым подготовил и опубликовал фотографии известный украинский пропагандист Евгений Малолетко, сотрудничающий с западными СМИ. Это информационный This is information terrorism. We hoped that the pregnant woman on the stretcher survived. So we went to search for her and other victims at the emergency hospital number two. Soldiers are guarding the entrance. Vladimir says this is the red zone now. The Russians have entered the neighborhood. So he comes with us. Floor by floor, we search for the pregnant women. There is no maternity ward. So we tried the surgery department. Surgeons are overwhelmed and low on painkillers. This piece of shrapnel was taken from a patient. Finally, we find one of the doctors who treated the woman on the stretcher. Her name was Irina. They said she screamed, kill me, when they brought her. She knew her child was dead. Other survivors are here. One of them has just given birth. Another is taken to an operating room. She lost part of her foot in the bombing and doctors worry about the child. Yeah. 
Там и детки. Кушать? Ну подожди, кись. Все, все, хотели кушать, да? Я не знаю. Да, хотели есть. Я. Давай. Делай такую, как использовала. Самолетом? Да с самолетом, да, наверное. Давайте там выходили, там дальше Все вышли с операционной, все. Где дашка наша? We have to leave, but the corridors are filled with people who lost homes, relatives. Пришли к брату. Все вместе. Чтобы мне так страшно было. Спустились в подвал с детьми, женщины с детьми спустились в подвал. И прилетел снаряд во двух. Нас осыпало в поребе. Двоих детей. Они спасли. Девочка 7 лет и мальчик 5 лет. Что вам рассказать, что мы две недели в аду? Не знаешь, куда бежать? Кто нам детей вернет? Кто? to the exit, but it's too late. Soldiers say a sniper just shot and injured a nurse in front of the hospital. Soldiers are still trapped.
So we run to the seventh floor, to our observation point. It's risky. They can open fire at upper floors of the hospital. But from here, we can see more. Лично видим визуально возле второй больницы напротив церкви, там где стоят автобусы, танки зашли с надписью Z. If reinforcements don't arrive, the soldiers downstairs will not be able to stop them. They'll take over the hospital. What should we do? We need to send all this footage. Survivors from the maternity bombing. Tanks shooting at residential areas. There is no connection here. And we can't get to our car. And if we get caught, Vladimir says, Russians will make you say, Everything you published was a lie. The night is sleepless. Feverish thoughts of past, present and future race through my mind. I want all of this to stop but I have no power over it. My memory keeps carrying me back home and back to war. If someday my daughters ask me, what did you do to stop this madness? This sadistic virus of destruction. I want to be able to give them an answer. Special military task force. All night we hid inside the hospital, and Vladimir used the last of his radio's battery to contact them. This morning they broke into the surgery department to rescue us. They said we were already behind the enemy lines.
are still wearing the scrubs the doctors gave us in case Russians entered the hospital that night. who have sheltered us, pregnant women who had been shelled, the people who live in hospital corridors because they have nowhere else to go. So we don't, we don't, we don't. took over the hospital a few hours after we escaped. They've taken the left bank, except that of Stahl Steel Factory. And they're closing in on the city center. Ukrainian forces fight back, but they are outnumbered. The city is slowly dying, like a human being. The day we escaped from the hospital, the military task force moved us and Vladimir to an area still under Ukrainian control. And for days we tried to find a way to get out of the city with all the footage. March 13th, shelling of residential areas continues. Я с вами это сделал. Вы, вы что? Ну наши, вот все кто нас бомбит, Они скажите, кто? Сказали, Российская Федерация, самолеты вас так бомбят. Так наши сказали, вывезите деток, деток вывезите. Пока не доехала под душу. Пожарные разогнали. Пожарные? Три дня назад с самолета Российская Федерация разбомбила единственную пожарную станцию. Вам интересно? Вам интересно? Вам интересно? Снимайте нас. Украинская армия. Пожарные вы заходите, дебилы, снимайте. 
Сейчас, сейчас, сейчас. Владимир keeps insisting we need to find a way to leave. But we no longer have our van. It was left behind in the hospital. And anyone who drives us with our cameras and hard drives through miles of occupied territory would be taking a risk. On March 15th, our editors send us a message. Yesterday some people were able to leave with a Red Cross convoy. And there is another one leaving today. We go to the last functioning hospital in the city. <coughs> convoy has left. tells us to follow him to the basement. Всему привыкаешь, но потом вечером это с головы не выходит. to catch up with a convoy. Vladimir says he can try to take us with his car. I tell him it's dangerous. But he wants to help to get us and our materials out. And he still hopes if the world saw everything that happened in Mariupol, he would give at least some meaning to this horror. Vladimir's car was damaged by shelling, but miraculously still runs. We are with his family. We make it through 100 kilometers of occupied territory and 15 Russian checkpoints. Cameras and hard drives hidden under seats. By dawn, 
we finally catch up with the Red Cross convoy. Yesterday, I told one of the officers who extracted us from the hospital, thank you for saving us. He said, thank you for telling the story of this city. And yet, as we drive away, I keep thinking about all the people whose tragedies will remain unknown. I will see my daughters. And I can only hope that these people survive and will be with their families too. The total number of refugees who have fled Ukraine so far is now nearing three million. And Russians continue to strangle and starve Mariupol. Got some new video this morning of 2,000 cars that officials say managed to make it out of Mariupol through a humanitarian corridor that Russia did not renege on. Devastating images are now emerging from Mariupol, where the mayor says the death toll could be as high as 20,000 since the war began. Leaving people without supply lines for food or water, without internet connection to the outside world. It was a tragedy. This woman and her unborn child later died. Now we know about the atrocities that have been happening inside Mariupol because of journalists from the Associated Press. The only international reporters to remain after the Russian bombardment bore witness to what have become indelible images of the war. AP reporters on the ground showed the world a mass grave in Mariupol. I'm talking about narrow trenches in Mariupol with babies' bodies in. AP, AP journalists have been there. I've seen so many fakes. Who wins the, the information war? The one who wins the war. Do you, do you really truly believe this? Do you truly believe what you're saying? 